Hey Tab Nation, it's Tom, and today we're going to be doing another Microsoft Office video having to do with comms, and it's really cool. Word is definitely, as far as comms go when it comes to Microsoft Office, seems to have the most flexibility and the most type of commands that you can use. So we're going to kind of cover uh, at least most of them I think I have in here. And yeah, so we're going to be using version 1 of Auto Hotkeys today. Obviously, you can use version 2. You just might have to change up the formatting a little bit. I'm not really sure. I actually have not played with comms in version 2 yet. I've played with other stuff, but not comms. If you know the answer to that, let me know if it's changed up drastically. Uh, so yeah, in my last video uh, with PowerPoint, we did basically the same thing here where we did the O word. Obviously, I said you could change that to whatever you want it to be. You just got to make sure you change it everywhere else also. So I'm just keeping it simple with Word, since we're using Word. Word. And then we're going to do a com object create. Now, in the last PowerPoint video, I did com object active. And what that means is that the program that you're trying to connect to has to be running or you're going to throw an error. It's basically going to be like, I don't know what to do. But in this video, we're going to be showing you how to do a create. That means Word does not have to be running. It's just going to automatically run it and create that connection. Um, so we're connecting to Word, the application, obviously, pretty self-explanatory. And then we need to add a new document. So we're doing that O word, documents, add. And that's just going to create a brand new spanking blank Word document. So now let's like kind of go ahead and start pre-filling stuff out, changing our style up and everything. That's really where this kind of shines, I think, is uh, you know if you got like a template or something, you can obviously, well, I'll show you here in a minute. But um, so the first thing we're going to do is selection. That's basically targeting the actual document. We're going to do a paragraph and we're going to format that uh, style and we're just going to do heading one. So we're throwing heading in there. Same thing down here, um, you know, we're just changing it from to no spacing versus like double spacing or 1.5 spacing. We're going to do no spacing between the lines. Uh, so you can obviously change that to whatever you want, but we're going to do no spacing. That's how I usually do it. Next, we're going to be playing around with the font. So we're still using that O word selection, which as you see, we're pretty much going to be using everywhere. But this time, instead of doing the paragraph formatting, we're going to be doing the font. We're going to play around with the font. So we're going to bold it, which is one, zero means don't bold. Um, so yeah, we're just going to bold, you know, whatever we're about to input. Uh, we're going to go ahead. Uh, we don't want to do this, so we're using that zero. We don't want it to uh, tell a like. I uh, can't even pronounce it. <laughs> Put it to the sideways. Next, we're going to change the color and we're just going to use black. You know, that's probably what you guys are going to be using. So honestly, this line does not need to exist because my default in Word is that the letters are already in black. But you can Google and find out the color codes for Word. You know, if you want it to be yellow or red or whatever, just find out what the uh, four digit number is for that color and change it to whatever you want. But yeah, you really don't need this if your default's already set to black. I'm just showing you in case you do want to do something different. Next, we're going to do size. We're going to change the font size to 18. Obviously, you just adjust this to whatever size you want. And then we're going to change the actual like font style. Um, so we're just going to be using this. Uh, if you want to change it to something else like Wingding or whatever, just use the name that is in that drop down in Word. Just make sure you match it to be exactly how it's uh, set in there. You know, if it has like a space between like Times New Roman or something, if there's spaces, make sure there's spaces, capitalized, all that kind of stuff. Just copy it exactly how it is over there to change it. Now, the next thing, which is the best line there is, is to actually type stuff. So we're doing selection, still type text. And whatever we have here in these parentheses and quotation marks is what it's going to type. So I'm just doing tab nation. Now, obviously, you could put a variable here. Let's say you're creating a template that has like a bunch of blanks in there. And normally you have to like, you know, hello name. And you have to double click on name and type the person's name or copy and paste it over. You could... Uh, find a way to grab that information maybe in a PDF using like regex or 
highlighting, then pushing, and then it copies the data over. So you could use variables here too. That way it doesn't have to be hard coded. And anytime you want to change it, you don't have to constantly edit your script. Um, but we're just going to do it this way. Keep it built in. I've done videos on how to grab information and put it into a variable in different ways. So check those out. So it's going to type tab nation using all these settings right here that we just did. Next, and, and obviously with these, if after this tab nation, if I wanted to completely change everything, I could copy and paste all this, make the adjustments, and then put another uh, type text. So then this would be based off these settings, but then I have these settings down here different. Then the next type text would be with the new settings. So you can always change it up. You don't have to do the whole document in the exact same you know, color format and all that. You can change it up at any time you want. Next, we are doing type paragraph, and this basically just creates a new line. So it just does a line break, jumps down a little bit. Type text, we're going to input the word uh, date with these little dots here. And then we're going to actually insert the date and time. So this is going to get typed, and then this is going to get basically inserted right there. And then once again, as I said here, we're just basically doing a new line and new line. So we're doing two lines. If you end up doing a bunch of lines, like maybe five or more, you can always just use one single one of these and put it inside of a, like a loop five, and then it would break down five times versus having to have five lines of code. So it really depends, you know, which way you want to go about that. But this is the simplest way for sure. Next, we're going to do another selection type text. Sub to me, pretty please. Pretty please, do sub to me. <laughs> and that's just typing that out. Uh, page setup, orientation, we're just keeping it at zero, which is pretty much what the default is. So technically, you don't really need this line unless that's not your default. Or you can change this to, you know, one. Play around with that to see what you like if you're trying to do something a little bit different. Uh, o word, visibility is true. I explained in the last video, that means I want to see the document once it is created. If I put false here, the document will be created, but I won't see it. It's kind of like it's almost working in the background. And then we're going to activate it, meaning bring it to the front. I want to see it right now. So if you don't want that, you can change that to false. You can always get rid of this active. That way, if you're in the middle of something, it goes ahead, does it, and then you can look at it when you want versus having it pull up right away. So that's really up to you if you want this line or not. You can comment it out or delete it. Uh, the last thing we're going to do um, is we're going to create a table into our Word document. So we're doing um, a Word active document. You know, Make sure we're targeting that which you know we're going to be targeting since we have that line of code anyway and we're going to do tables we're going to add we're going to do range and we're just going to do o word selection range so that's going to grab some information from here so you got some stuff you just play around with whatever you need number of rows number of columns so we're doing six rows with three columns uh table behavior I haven't really played around with this. I just left it at zero to keep it default. I'm not sure like if you change this to one, two, or three, what the behavior actually becomes. I don't mess around with tables too often when it comes to Word. Uh, let me know if you know the answer to that a little bit better than what I'm explaining to it. I would definitely like to know. I haven't really played with it. And also with the uh, fit behavior and fit fix, as far as I know, that's just saying kind of like center it. But I could be wrong. Let me know. Like I said, I don't mess around with tables too much in Word. I use other stuff. Um, so yeah, basically here, we're just doing the grid where uh, the style we want is table grid. You can change that to whatever you want. And then there's some other settings down here, you know, like heading rows, true. Do you want the last row style? You know, how do you want it to be styled, basically? So there's a few options here. You just play around with them. So I pretty much just went true, false, true, false, true, false. Why not? Uh, just play it with it however you want. And then the last thing we're going to do is make sure, once again, that that is visible and activate it. Um, so we're just doing this in a little bit of a different way than we did up here where we said equals true. One, I just put this in here to show you that one also means true. So you can use the word true or one. I prefer to use true because anybody looking at this code is going to understand it a little bit better than, oh, what's a one mean if they're pretty new to coding? Yeah. 
Definitely a lot going on here. Let's go ahead and just see it in action now. So I called it Word. Pretty simple. And I believe I used the hotkey F1. All right, I'm going to go ahead and press F1. And it's going to take a few seconds just because, you know, it has to launch the program. I do not have it running. There it goes. Now, once it launches, it's very quick to put all that information in. So it took a few seconds to launch just because I didn't have it running yet. It has to find it, run it. But as soon as it opened, I mean, it instantly, like in less than a second, created the new document and inputted all that information. So as you see, I got my heading up here, Tab Nation. It inserted the date, uh, which is correct. Sub to me, pretty please. As you see, there's that line break that I did where I went one and then two. So then it typed here. And then here is our table here with one, two, three, four, five, six rows and three columns. And then the styles there where it's centered and it has you know all the lines in there breaking up the different cells. So yeah, uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, I'll probably do a follow-up video because there is definitely more you can do when it comes to Word. This is kind of an intro. I'll do a little bit more of a advanced one. I mean, not too advanced, but we'll do some stuff like image inputting, uh, title, page numbering, that kind of stuff. Some of the more like fancy stuff that you can do. This will just be the intro. So definitely look out for that second video where we do some more, you know, play around a little bit more with inputting stuff in a more fancy way. And if you have any questions about this, definitely let me know. Obviously all this code will be posted in the description below with a link. And I will see you guys on the next Microsoft Office comms video. Have a great day. Thank you.